Hi guys, let's have another look at fading to transparency in Affinity Photo in two easy methods. Now there are two methods on here and they're both really easy. So just follow along and you'll have a really nice set of tools. So first thing, set up the image. Now this looks very much like a video I did just previously and it's based on the same material but different methods. So let's begin. I'll be using a stock image from Pixabay in the stock studio for this tutorial. You can find other stock photos of people from Envato Elements, for example. See the links in the description. For this how-to, it helps if you choose a stock image where the model has edges that you can see clearly. It's not necessary, but it helps in the exercise. It's also an added bonus if the background is not too distracting. Now, as I mentioned, this tutorial is very similar at the start to my previous one on lens blur. So don't be confused if it seems familiar. It's really not. Now, create a new project. Simply use a standard photo preset and give it a transparent background. I like to work with transparent backgrounds. You can see that I've pinched the canvas in so I can see it all on the iPad screen. Open the stock studio and locate the image that you want. Or of course you might use your own image from the Photos app or something like that. Drag the image onto the canvas. Of course it will be the wrong size, but we can e easily fix that. So you go to the, to the um, little square there that looks like an old floppy disk, the Transform Studio. Set the image center in the focus point setting Enable the lock in the height and width and steadily reduce the image size to fit the canvas. You may lose a bit of the image, but that's okay in this exercise. First, drag out a coloured rectangle and place it beneath the image. We'll use this in a moment for emphasis. I've made mine a nice teal blue. So I've got the image on the top and the blue rectangle beneath it. You know it's there because you can see the, the, um, the bounding box. Now we need to select the image layer. Then select the fill tool, not the flood fill tool, just the fill tool below it. I don't know why they've called it that, but there you go. I guess it does, in some sense, fill the image. But that's, where, that's the one we want. It looks like, a, hmm, looks like something on its side with a line through it. Now, make sure you have the image layer selected. That's the top one over there, which I haven't got selected in this shot, but that's okay. Select the top one, then tap the fill tool, then select the type radial in the context toolbar. You want the radial type for this. You can experiment with the others if you like, but we're using the radial one. Don't forget to select that top layer, otherwise you run into all sorts of problems and get very confused. You'll see the gradient arms appear from centre to edge with a dot at each end and distance markers placed along the axis. Now I'm going to do something slightly different with the radius on this one, but you'll see. Just follow along. Doesn't appear to be doing much at the moment, but nor will it. Now drag each end out so that it's lined up on the edge of the image. Not the coloured rectangle beneath it, that's the, that's the coloured rectangle on the lower layer. We don't want that one, you want it lined up on the image. You still have the dot at each end and the centre marker in the middle, just near the girl's face there. Now we can try and experiment, just for fun. You can see that I've reduced the colour opacity on the right side, because now you can see the teal coloured layer beneath. So I've selected the dot on the right hand side of that horizontal bar. Then I've gone to the colour um, tool at the top there. And you can see that and I've reduced the opacity of that colour to 27%. Now that's the layer that we're on. So I've reduced its opacity just on that side to 27%. Let's look at this a little further. Remember we have a transparent project underlying all of the layers, but you can see the teal coloured layer 
showing through the image now. Now I've turned the blue layer off altogether. Now you can see the transparency showing through as the colour layer is switched off or deselected. And you can see up there there's no tick in the little box. So it's deselected. Now then, continuing right along, we're going to adjust the radial slightly. I added another dot to the centre and moved the markers along the axis to shift the centre of focus. And you can see the red arrow I've got pointing to it. I put another dot on the centre. You just tap the centre line and another dot will appear. Now I've moved that along and that's moved the radial focus along, sitting right on the girl's nose as it turns out. I also selected the left dot and adjusted the colour opacity of that end. Now the opacity at the left hand end is about 63%. The result, slightly softer. Now you can see you've got a kind of a vignette appearance happening there. Now let's make this whole thing a little tighter. By drawing in the axis, starting from the right, starting from the right hand end, you draw that line across. If you start from the left hand end, it just moves the line. But if you start from the right hand end, you can shorten the line along the axis. Then selecting the left end, move it all to the right to bring the focus back to the face. Now you can see because I've tightened down the radius by shortening the line, you can see the radius there is from the dot on the girl's nose to the edge of the circle. That's the radius. And I've got a little more control over it there with that center dot and another couple of lines not quite on the right hand edge and not quite on the center dot. You can get a lot of control over it with that. Now you can see because the colored layer beneath is not selected, you can see the transparency showing through there. So you get a lot of control over your image by using that. You can make it as hard or as soft as you like. Now I've turned on the coloured background to give your image more interest. Just tick it, turn it on. Now it's gone a little blue. There's a little bit of blue on the girl's nose, around her face and her eyes, but you can adjust that out. That's fairly straightforward. I've left that there because I rather like the softness of the blue, the teal coloured showing through there. And of course, as you can see, you could use any background you like, or none. You could put a city behind the girl, and the cityscape would show through. You can experiment and, and adjust to suit your needs. Too easy. Mask it? Well, you can even now drag your image into the blue layer to combine them into a mask. And of course there are other ways of doing this for much the same result. So let's look at another one. This one's really exciting. And it's really easy. You can see there's three layers there. Set up a similar layer stack. Well, almost. A colour layer with an image layer on top. And another layer of any colour, hmm, grey, on top of that. The grey layer is selected. Remember, if you're going to work on these layers, you've got to have them selected. If you don't select them, you end up in all sorts of trouble. Now, again, with the top grey layer selected, select the Fill Tool and Gradient Type Radial. And you can see you've got your horizontal bar there, dot on the left, dot on the right, and a little bar in the middle. Select the left dot and reduce its opacity to zero. Uh, this is a black and white image, by the way, so it hasn't changed everything to black and white. The image is black and white. You can now make adjustments as you wish. And you can see that it's fading out towards the edge there where it's slightly misty fady, but the centre where the girl's face is, is directly in focus. I've now masked the two layers by dragging the top layer halfway into the image layer and this allows you to come back and adjust the gradient as you wish simply by selecting the mask layer. You can see the mask layer selected and there's the gradient controls right in the middle of it. And why is it showing orange? 
The last thing I'll do is select the group layer and change the layer option to multiply. And that shows the orange layer through it. In other words, if you had any type of layer under there, it would show through. Multiply is just one of them. It's really easy to use. Just flick it to multiply and there you go. And that's all folks. A nice image, very sepia toned, very old fashioned. Change your black and white photos to sepia toning. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the thumbs up to like. If you want to be reminded when new videos pop up, tap on the bell and uh, there's a couple of options there. Thanks for watching.